So a couple of days ago, I reported on the new speech codes being adopted by Qantas that, amongst other things, implores staff to not use gender-specific terms such as guys, love, and honey to avoid offending other staff members. Husband and wife and mum and dad have been blacklisted. Partner, spouse, and parents are the preferred terms to avoid excluding LGBTI families. Men are advised to minimise man interruptions. You must use the word humanity instead of mankind despite both containing the word man. And by the way, does that mean that man-made global warming should now be referred to as human-made global warming? And you can't say Australia was settled, you must say it was invaded or colonised. Also, I noted in that video the source of these edicts was the Diversity Council of Australia. Now, on Wednesday, Miranda Devine managed to coax the CEO of the Diversity Council of Australia onto her show for a chat about their penchant for speech policing. The segment runs for about 15 minutes, and I'll leave a link to that blow. I'm just going to play some of the juicier parts of that interview. And for those that don't know, Miranda Devine is a columnist for the Daily Telegraph and has her own radio program, Miranda Devine Live. And she's not a big fan of PC authoritarians. So it's about the choices people make around the words that they use and the impact that has on other people. So they're guidelines. It's certainly not a a rule book. And um, we're certainly not telling people what words they can and they can't use. But you know that when a you work for a company and their human resources, or they call them people and culture department, sends out guidelines, that that is an ex- expectation in the workplace. And it's sending a message to people who just naturally use those words without giving offence, uh, that they are being offensive. And it tells other people that they should be offended. And uh, this just goes against normal human interactions. And, you know, I, I want to ask you today these words that you've put into this or Qantas on your guide guidance has put into this voluminous booklet that they've issued to all staff you, you know you, you've you've put in there terms that you have deemed to be offensive today in you know March 2018 but in five years time there will be different words you know it always political correctness evolves and mm-hmm. it, it's really about power isn't it it's about the power to to tell people how to think and what language to use? Um, no, I think it's about an organisation determining what type of organisation it wants to be. It doesn't want to be an organisation where people come to work and they feel like, you know, they can just get on with the job or do they want to be an organisation where people come to work and they might be joking that they feel excluded from. We don't want to make the workplace like the playground. We're grown-ups in the workplace. We want to treat people with respect. So you're Well, then right. why don't you just let them talk the way they normally do in their normal life instead of behaving like robots in the workplace? Well, people can talk the way they normally do in no, their normal life. No, they can't, because I but say, hey, guys, all the time to people at work. And oh, somehow that's now politically incorrect, sexist, I don't know what it is. Well, I don't know what's wrong with it. I know people who call me dull and I think it's nice. I wouldn't call someone dull because it's not just the way I talk. But people who use that language, it's not offensive. I don't find it offensive. I don't want to be told that I I should find it offensive. Things that are offensive, as you know, Miranda, in the eyes of the beholder, I actually don't like being called dull. I prefer people just call me Lisa, especially when I want to be treated. Why don't you just say that? Why don't you say yeah, that? Yeah, and, and I, Sometimes and I, you forget I, someone's I name and you call that. them mate. Oh, mate's fine. Even guy's fine. I think since writing these guidelines, we wrote them two years ago, we've become aware um, because, you know, like you said, language continues to change. And we always intended for these documents to be a work in progress. And we've since realised that when we do the next iteration of these, we'll probably take out guys because guys are a gender neutral thing especially with younger people but that's what i mean why do this at all because you're just issuing guidelines and then people go oh those words are off limits and then you issue new guidelines and new words are off limits it's like something out of soviet russia i'm sorry i don't know why you can't see that you you really have no right to police the language people use 
in their workplace, in their private life, anywhere. And and you really have no right to, to tell me that I should be offended about any of these words. I don't find any of these words offensive. I find, I, what I find offensive is having some bureaucratic body like the Diversity Council, which really has no reason to exist, just going and, and suppurating across the corporate world and demanding that we speak in certain ways. And even if you, you, you couch it in, you know, non-compulsory terms, it ends up being a compulsory issue at work. Now, I played that through because I didn't want to interrupt the flow, but there are several things I want to address in there. Notice when challenged on this type of PC authoritarianism, there's always a climb down, a backpedaling. Oh, they're just guidelines. You don't have to follow them. But of course, Miranda's exactly right. People will end up sounding like robots only using approved language. It's conformity, ironically cloaked as a diversity initiative it will result in self-censorship in the workplace because you'll be afraid that you might get yourself into hot water. Someone overhears you talking about mankind and someone else can claim to be offended by it. And the next thing you know, you're having a conversation with the human resources department about inappropriate language. Oh, sorry, the people and culture department. Even Guy is fine. I think since writing these guidelines, we wrote them two years ago, we've become aware um, because, you know, like you said, language continues to change and we always intended for these documents to be a work in progress. And we've since realised that when we do the next iteration of these, we'll probably take out guys because guys are a gender neutral thing, especially with younger people. And this is just a classic. Most people already knew that guys was a gender neutral term. I said this in a video I made almost two years ago when this bullshit first came out. Remember this idiotic interaction? I pulled out the phrase guys. Hey guys, guys, mm -hmm. can we have a meeting? Guys, what do you think? Which I use all the time. So and, do uh, I. <laughs> yep. And you pointed out, and you're right. It's, it's a problem because I'm not a guy. No, and uh, look, I, I, I am now, I have now removed that from my, uh, my uh, lexicon. Yep. So basically the female host has been using the term guys for years without a care in the world. But because someone told her it's offensive, she now thinks it's offensive, even though she never found it to be offensive before, and presumably no one ever complained about her using the term. As Miranda said, whatever terms the diversity authoritarians come up with this year will ultimately need to be replaced later on. So why not let language evolve naturally? For all my life, there's been um, words like mankind. Uh, as a woman, I don't feel excluded by that. I just feel that we are part of mankind. As a woman, I'm part of mankind. And suddenly that's a verboten word. Well, I think some people do would prefer to hear humankind because they yeah, feel but, that's more... But why should we change the way... The other? But why do we have to change the way the majority speaks for a tiny minority of people who I'm sorry are snowflakes and just ought to grow up and start living in the real world instead of being so selfish and demanding and entitled that they expect that everyone else is going to cater and pander to their neuroses? Look, I think what you raise demonstrates that this sort of stuff really touches a nerve with people. So why so do I, it? I, well, I would like to reiterate that what we're doing is trying to have organisations have conversations about the way they use language in the workplace. Now, the reason it touches a nerve is because grown adults don't like to be lectured to about what kind of language they can and can't use. The underlying philosophy of these authoritarians is that they fundamentally don't trust ordinary people. You can't be trusted not to be racist or sexist. You need to be told by your cultural betters how to behave. And as long as you as an employee go along with this kind of PC nonsense and don't speak up, you can expect more of it. I'll see you next time.